Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance, and in this presentation we're going to be covering uh, the periodization strategies for speed training and how we can basically um, progress uh, training over time um, in order to optimize athletic performance. So the first thing we need to understand is what the athlete's objectives are. So what does this athlete actually aim to achieve to be um, at their uh, peak performance for their sport? Do they need to be able to run really fast, so maximum speed in a, maybe a, a straight line? Do they need to be able to accelerate really well? Do they need to change direction uh, really well to be successful? Is there any reactive agility in, uh, involved, uh, pretty characteristic of team sports or field sports? Or are they more of a four, like a 400 to 800 meter runner and they need that speed endurance? So once we've established that, we can sort of, um, start developing some periodization principles. So some very general periodization principles um, sort of state that we want to emphasize the underlying qualities of, um, in this case, speed, which is going to then potentiate uh, the training when we do specific speed training. So basically what this means is that we need to work on the qualities that actually um, build and build and build the qualities that actually um, underlie speed. And then when we actually do specific speed training itself, specific relative to uh, the athlete's objectives, um, that's going to enhance when we do that specific speed training. We're going to be able to actually reach peaks that we, we wouldn't otherwise be able to reach without doing this underlying training. So to understand the underlying quality of, of speed training, um, see the video Contributing Factors to Sprint Performance on this uh, YouTube channel. Um, so the first thing we go through is maximum speed, what sort of periodization sort of general strategies we want to employ. So um, the periodization strategy we're going to sort of use for this is going to be a short to long approach where basically we, we're talking about linear speed here. So we want to start with a shorter acceleration type runs. So literally five to 10 meters, very short maximum intensity. And we want to build those distances gradually um, over time and build up to distances of uh, 50 to 70 meters around there until we're sort of hitting those maximum speeds. So speed endurance, moving on. Um, essentially, the strategy we want to use here is we want to start with uh, maximum speed training or gradually build up to maximum speed training, just like in, in, uh, in this periodization um, strategy. And then we want to continually um, basically increase the distance in order to um, transition into that speed endurance phase. So basically we want to build that maximum speed first, so get as fast as possible. And then over time, you want to um, basically prolong the distances while ensuring that you're still maintaining 90% plus speeds um, during those efforts. So basically we're doing very high speed speeds but we're trying to prolong that over time and build our ability to um, continually um, uh, continually uh, travel at a quick pace and last but not least agility uh, or change of direction um, the only difference here is that agility is going to involve a stimulus so a reaction to a stimulus but essentially the physical quality is change of direction so basically what we, what we want to do is that we want to build sort of linear speed so that we can actually build that maximum speed and acceleration qualities like we previously talked about. And then we want to then slowly transition to uh, change of direction drills and then um, uh, more complex change of direction drills. So I'll, I'll get into what that means. So first we want to build that acceleration and maximum speed similar to um, what we had here in this maximum speed periodization. So we might want to start with shorter runs um, and then build to longer distances over time. So we're building that linear foundation. Um, and then we want to gradually shift over time to um, some change of direction drills. So we might start with more mild change of direction drills. So things like zero to 90 degree cuts, or maybe you want to break that up even smaller, zero to 45 degree cuts, then 45 to 90 degree cuts. And then we want to progress to more aggressive change of direction. So things like 90 to 180 degree cuts, which is going to be a lot more aggressive and quite a bit more uh, taxing on the, on the joints and the muscular system. 
Also a good strategy to do to use here is to increase the distance between cuts. So for example, if we're doing um, somewhere between 90 and 180 degree cuts, we might only be doing five to 10 meters between each effort. So we can't actually reach maximum speed. If we then increase the distance between these to uh, 10 to 15 meters, we then basically allow the athlete to run faster and then each change of direction, uh, the athlete actually has to absorb a lot more force eccentrically. So that can increase the, it's another way to increase the intensity. And then as well for um, reactive agility, we want to introduce a stimulus. So this is a bit contentious if the strength conditioning coach is really responsible for this, or is this um, more something that happens with experience over time in the sport. But nonetheless, if that's the goal, if that's what you want to train, then you need to introduce some sort of stimulus um, after you've progressed to these aggressive cuts. That's it for this presentation. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram with the details here. Um, and if you haven't already, you can subscribe on this YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest informative videos that are posted. So on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics. And if you're a curious individual interested in learning more about sports performance training, this might interest you because these are essentially the latest research um, summarized into these easy to understand graphics. So you can quickly um, basically get an understanding of the latest uh, research in sports performance training so you can stay up to date with um, what's happening and how um, the science field is progressing. So again, thanks for watching guys, and hopefully you got something out of this video.